I am speaking with Allison Jones, who is the Educational Program Coordinator for the South Carolina Botanical Garden. And Allison, I think y'all are still coming up with creative projects from home. How are you um, sharing things with people who want to participate? Yes. Yeah, so um, in particular, one of the programs that I run is called Budding Artists in a Bag. We used to do Budding Artist, and of course, we've changed it to a virtual option, thus the bag portion. Um, and so I'm creating uh, video tutorials and, of course, PDF uh, files to go along with those to supplement that. And then I put together the materials in a bag and we have a contact free pickup um, and folks can enjoy those programs that way. So what are we going to do today? And um, I think your children may have helped, but uh, but it's something that we could do for a fall theme or we could turn it into a Halloween theme, depending um, on what our needs were. Yeah, so I think this project's really versatile. Um, the project is making hypertufa pumpkins. And so they can be used a lot of different ways, but um, they, like you say, they can be used as fall decoration or Halloween decoration, and they can be used outdoors and indoors. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, I hear about hypertufa all the time, and I know it's not as heavy as concrete. Um, so tell us how you, how do we start with this? What all do we need? And what are the steps in, in preparing the hypertufa? Sure. So to begin with, you're going to need perlite. You're going to need peat moss and Portland cement. Those are your right. three main ingredients for creating the hypertufa mixture that you're going to use to create your pumpkin. How many cups of each one would you maybe start with? Exactly. So you're going to use those ingredients in equal uh, portions. So for me, if I'm doing a small, um, smaller pumpkin, I'll use a cup to two cups of each of those ingredients. If I'm doing medium, I would do, you know, depending on kind of the graduated size I'm making, two to three cups or four cups. Um, and for a larger size, five or six cups. When you get... Oh. Bigger than that, it gets harder to find something to um, use as a form, but those are about about those proportions. Okay, so tell us how to mix it up and get it ready to put in whatever form we are going to use, please. Sure. So it's really quite simple. So you're going to start um, with your perlite. You're going to kind of, the first time is going to be an experiment, okay? So I would say if you're wanting to start out with a small pumpkin, so do say two cups of perlite. Now you're going to get your two cups of peat moss. Mix those two ingredients first, then add your two cups of Portland cement. And again, Mix it so it's nice. Your dry ingredients, just like if you were mixing dry ingredients in a recipe, are nice and combined. And right. then after that, you can add water. So water, you can think of it the same way. You can say, I'm if I've used two cups of everything, I'm going to plan to use around two cups of water. But you may use less and you may use more. If you're using more, you're gonna get a more squat pumpkin that has much more uh, deep furrows, deep ribbing in it. And if you're using less of the water, that can give you a little bit more upright and less um, deep, but more shallow creases in the pumpkin. Once again, I think pantyhose are an essential part of your life, not for <laughs> your, um, not for your dressing up for, for your <laughs> class. So tell us how we're going to use pantyhose to make the form for our pumpkins, please. Sure, sure. So you definitely want to use pantyhose because that's what's going to serve as the form that you fill to create your pumpkin shape. So if you have a pair of pantyhose, um, you can use each of the legs to create kind of a small to medium sized pumpkin. And you, you may actually, depending on the length and how large your pumpkin is, you may actually get out of one leg, you may get two pumpkins worth. You may have enough hosiery. But if you're gonna do a larger size, you're gonna use kind of the hip portion of the pantyhose. You're gonna cut off those legs and then tie what's left so that you have um, a closed bottom and then an open waist in which to fill your mixture. So you're really going to cut them as if they were like a pair of women's underpants, sort of. That's right. That's and right. Then, and then tie off the, those little leg, the mm -hmm. remnants of the legs, mm -hmm. and put that, and then 
and then I'm going to leave the top open to put the hypertufer in. Yes, yes. Okay. And so that's the next step is putting it in. Now, here's an important thing. Um, it can be quite hard if you're by yourself to hold a knee high or a pantyhose leg or the waist open while troweling in this kind of dense mixture, right? So if you have a, a helper nearby, have them hold it open for you and then you can um, slop it in, okay? But if you don't, if you're using um, the leg or a knee high, use like a cup or something that you can insert it down in okay. and wrap the edge around as kind of a, a, a way to keep it open. Or a bowl, if you have a, a, the larger size, the waist of the hose, you can use a bowl for that purpose. Okay, okay. Um, and so we've got that done and we're gonna tie the top of those pantyhose off again. But one of the fun things about pumpkins, I think, that is the creases in them. So how are we gonna achieve that? Absolutely, so that's where things really start to look like a pumpkin. So I'm, I may have neglected to say, when you're, when you're filling that in or once you have it tied, do massage it just a touch to make sure that you get kind of the shape you want, okay? Just, it won't take long, but just a basic round shape. And then, like you say, it's time to add those creases. So you're gonna use rubber bands to do that. Oh, so okay. you're gonna essentially apply these rubber bands in a radial shape. You can kind of think of it like the way you would cut a pizza. So you're gonna go in one direction, then perpendicular. You can go willy nilly if you want to, and some folks will want to, so feel free. But okay. um, if you want it even, you know, it kind of helps to go in that pattern and then apply as many or as few as you like to achieve um, that sort of ribbing that you want. And then I think you get to take a little break. <laughs> yes, that's right. You are done. And one thing I didn't mention is that it's good to have some like cardboard or something. This can be kind of a messy experience because even if you use less water rather than more, you're always going to have some liquid that seeps all over. And sure. also you might want to wear gloves because that Portland cement can be kind of caustic and it can dry your hands out pretty quickly. But, um, but yeah, so once you have those bands applied, you are ready to let this find a location for this to sit for at least 24 hours to cure out. Okay. Before you move on. <laughs> and then let's, and then how are we going to make it really look kind of like a pumpkin? Okay. So now that it has dried for 24 hours, you get the, um, exciting task of removing those bands and removing those hose to see what's revealed underneath okay so you'll already kind of um when you look at it you'll almost not even see the hose i used black hosiery and you still it kind of blended in but um you're going to take your scissors you can start to pull away the rubber bands with your hands but sometimes you need the scissors because if you have really deep furrows they're going to get stuck in there don't worry, just pull that, that um, band and snip away until it sinks into the furrow and you don't see it. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Don't worry about it. All right. Exactly. Exactly. As long as you can't see it, you're fine. And then you're just going to start to pull away the hosiery. They're going to tear because they're going to be somewhat stuck and everything. And um, once you have it all pulled away and every little bit removed, um, you're ready to start adding some more details at that point. Okay, and so we think of them as having um, the, our one of our extension agents, Tony Melton, says, "Don't pick up a pumpkin by the handle because they usually have some stem left on it." Sure. So, can we put some stem on our pumpkin? Absolutely. So that's that helps to really bring the pumpkin home, right? Um, so the next thing you're gonna do in order to apply a stem, you're going to need some hot glue. Okay. Mm -hmm or some kind of heavy doo-doo glue. You might could use Gorilla Glue or something, but hot glue is the easiest to work with. And you're also going to need um, some rope. Now I will tell you, my examples use rope for the stem, but you also can get creative um, and use something, you know, like if you had a little segment of a branch or something and you wanted oh. to glue that on, that could be attractive as well. Okay. But you're going, yeah, you're going to just apply that hot glue and that nice divot that was created when you tied your knot down. Yes. And um, before you do that, let me say it helps if you kind of remove some of the dust, the hypertufa dust that's in the middle there, just to make sure you get good adhesion of the glue. OK. But yeah. OK. And then do you um, want some more natural looking features that you try to give it? 
Yeah, so what we uh, like to do, and certainly it's optional, people, some people like this look and some may not, but I really think it looks pretty, and I especially like it for using them outdoors to add some moss, and especially because this hypertufa, you know, is kind of an industrial type of look, the material, right? So um, I like to add some details to kind of give it a more organic look. So I like to add moss, and I like to add a tendril to the stem, okay? okay. So for the tendril, um, you can use wire. You'll need at least a foot of wire. I like to use a little more than that. Um, and you're gonna take that wire and kind of form one loop. And then you're going to wrap it around a pencil or some other cylindrical item so that you can curl oh. it, uh -huh. okay? And once you have that point, you're going to pull it out and just pose it how you like. You can add some more yeah. crimps or loops, you know, to make okay. it look more like a tendril. And that original loop you created, you can kind of use just like a ring on the stem and put it right on there and cinch it down. Um, and as for the moss, you're going to go um, purchase some craft moss from like the craft store. It's, you'll find bags of dried out, pre-prepared craft moss. And that moss, um, what really helps is if you have access to a blender that you don't mind putting craft moss in, <laughs> or if even a mortar and pestle you can kind of grind this dried moss with. If you use that, in my case, I used a blender to blend it up and make it into a fine kind of moss dust. It won't take long. And then you can kind of spoon out. You'll have some that's very dusty, and then you'll have some that's a little more coarse, and that's what you want. And yeah. so you'll then add, just use some uh, Elmer's glue and a paintbrush and you'll apply it how you like. I like to kind of concentrate moss around that stem and into those creases. It makes kind of a natural look. And then you just, with your fingers, place the moss on top of the glue until you get the look you like. Now, sometimes you paint the pumpkins too. And, um, and is there a, a paint that, that you can use with children? I, I, I mean, Elmer's glue is safe to use with the children and the moss would be, is there a safe paint so that the children can be involved? Yes. So my daughters use an acrylic craft paint and it worked very, very well. Um, I will say Hypertufa is a bit porous, so it's going to take a little bit of paint. It'll take more, you know, it'll soak up more paint than paper would, for example. So that works great. But also, you know, if it not, it wouldn't be child friendly, but if an adult was interested in using like a concrete stain or something like oh. that, that certainly could make a pretty outcome too. And I know y'all have um, a lot of um, plant material in your yard, and I think your girls kind of did a preview of maybe the way you do use Thanksgiving dinner. Um, you, did you send them out kind of on a scavenger hunt for, for things? Yes. So my girls love, they really love picking flowers more than anything, but they are constantly collecting uh, treasures, if you will, when we're out on nature walks. So we actually, what we used um, to kind of show how these pumpkins can be used indoors decoratively um, what we used were actually, it was from their stockpile of nature <laughs> treasures. Oh. They both have boxes of natural items, you know, that they keep, but they did. They collected flowers and, and fall leaves as well as using some uh, buckeye nuts and some black oh. walnuts that had been chewed oh, on by squirrels. Um, and so they, they picked those things out. And then, um, although it's um, a little bit early, I think that um, they gave us... Um, they um, gave us a preview of, of Halloween. So tell us about that. Yes. So they, this year, um, my six-year-old decided on her costume actually months ago after seeing, <laughs> she saw a movie called Kiki's Delivery Service, which is a, a Japanese movie about a, a witch, which witches are different and look a little different in Japanese <laughs> culture. Um, but so she decided that she and her sister were going to be uh, Kiki. The little one is Kiki, the witch. And Eva is Gigi, um, the talking cat. And so they they are very excited to wear their costumes for Halloween. <laughs> well, um, I think they are two mighty lucky girls to have such a creative mother who's managing work and children at home and taking the time to share a wonderful idea with making it grow. We thank you and we wish you and your family a lovely fall with some beautiful cool days and some lovely nature walks where they can add to their collections. 
Thank you so much, Amanda. I appreciate it.